Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick tutorial on um, pause buffering helmet proxy. Um, this is something that I've started doing more recently and I don't think anyone's ever done it. Um, so I just thought I'd um, share how I do it in case it is something that um, people can benefit from. A few disclaimers before I get into it. I definitely um, would recommend learning the trick normally before you start implementing pause buffering. Um, you already need a decent understanding of how the trick works before um, pause buffering can really help you. And even after you start using it, if it is something you want, I definitely recommend continuing to practice and learn the, um, the trick without pause buffering um, because pause buffering does lose time. It doesn't look quite as artful. That can turn off um, players, I'm sure, but, um, but ultimately it isn't optimal. However, I do find that it's more consistent, so even though it does lose a couple sec seconds from pausing intermittently um, between movements in the trick, if it helps you be more consistent and get it first try more often, um, then it's worth it. So um, go ahead and, and practice it if you want, but definitely learn the trick normally as well. Um, so what this is mostly gonna do is slow down the turn so that um, you can time your inputs using visual cues so that you're not doing things that can throw it off like this where you turn too early and hit that hump in the wall. That was actually fairly high, but even still it wasn't very good positioning. Or if you turn too late and end up bumping something like this. Oh, actually that was decent. But if you end up bumping on the wall right here rather than sliding up it, then um, that's because you're turning too late. So pause buffering is gonna help so that you can um, time your inputs more properly. Yes, just stuff like that. So um, what you're gonna do is start normally. You're gonna aim Spyro so that his head is aimed at that corner of the, the helmet. And you're gonna do your normal three or four frame charge input. And as you let go of charge after three or four frames, like you normally would, you're gonna hit, or you're gonna hold up, right, and L2. And right after you let go of charge and hit those or hold those three buttons, that's when you're going to do your first pause. So charge, hit them, and then pause. You're already starting to move backward. Um, the timing with pause buffering is variant; just depends on on how quick you are, which is why the visual cues are important, so that you're not relying on a specific number of pauses, but rather your position relative to um, the curves of the mountain. So after this first pause, um, what you're going to do is um, just tap or press pause or start twice to unpause and pause the game. And what that's going to do is move you along the mountain. I like to do it about two times. Um, still um, the whole time holding up and right and L2. And at this point, what you're going to do, I'm actually going to stop. You're going to look for this diamond, this hump in the, or this diamond before the hump in the wall right here. Um, this first diamond and this second dark blue diamond right here are your points of reference. Um, like I mentioned, when you're moving backward, you're just going to be unpausing and pausing while you're holding up and right and L2 until you get between these two diamonds. Um, you don't want to be too close to this first one, but you don't want to be past this second one either. You want to be kind of right here where you're closer to the second one but still in between them. When you get to the, um, this point, um, what you want to do is rotate from the up right and L2 to an up left and L2 input set. Um, you need to make sure that you're holding those um, before you unpause. If you don't, then it's going to kill your momentum or throw off your direction. While you're in the pause menu, you can actually let go of the inputs and it won't um, cut your momentum at all, um, which is another benefit to using this method because it can slow your, your inputs down and you can even let go of them. Um, but just to recap, so you're going to start with your um, three or four frame charge and then right after you let go of charge, you're going to hit up and right in L2 and then pause. Now I'm going to pause or unpause and pause again, unpause and pause again, unpause and pause again. So there's that first diamond that I've passed. So I can't see the second one again, so I'm going to be close. I don't want to get past that second diamond, but I'm going to go ahead and unpause and pause one more time really quickly. So I'm just past it, but it should be fine. This isn't ideal, but now I'm going to rotate from holding up and right in L2 to up and left in L2, and I'm going to unpause and pause again. 
So now I'm going to let go of up and now I'm just holding left and L2. And I'm going to unpause and pause one more time. And now I'm going to rotate once more to left and down and L2. And I'm holding those buttons. As you saw, the cursor moves a little bit during the start menu. Sometimes if your inputs are slow, that's okay because we're not actually using the X input to select anything in the start menu. We're just unpausing and pausing with the start button. Um, so it doesn't matter if your cursor moves. So now I'm holding uh, left and down and L2 and I'm just gonna unpause and continue holding those inputs until I'm sliding up the wall. And there you go. That wasn't quite as high as ideal, but um, I mean, even with the normal method, it's still a little bit variant. Um, you can consistently get high ones just like um, without pause buffering, um, even using pause buffer, but um, the timing does depend, like I said, on just how quick your pauses are. So just to go over it one more time pretty quickly, so you're gonna do your square input and then you're gonna hit up and or hold up and right in L2 and then pause. Um, so that's actually bad. That squiggle shape um, on Spyro's tail kind of means that his momentum is um, off. He's not actually gonna move all the way backward. So go ahead and try it again. Square, up, right, and L2, and then pause. Happened again. <laughs> One more time. Square, up, right, and L2, and then pause. So there's that first pause. I'm just gonna unpause and pause, unpause and pause. And I moved past that first dark blue diamond, so I'm gonna, I'm getting, I'm coming close to the second one. I can't quite see it on screen yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start rotating. So now I'm holding up and left in L2, and I'm gonna unpause and pause one more time. And then I'm gonna do uh, left in L2, and then pause and unpause. And now I'm gonna hit um, down and left in L2, holding that unpause, and move up the wall. So like I said, that was a little bit earlier. I didn't want to make it too late. So I did end up having to turn slightly earlier. <clears throat> um, so the proxy wasn't quite as high. So you still need to practice those jumps at the end if that is something you struggle with. Um, but yeah, I find that this is definitely something that helps me be more consistent. So I like using it. Um, but if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And hope this helps.